Greetings to my Southside Church family. I hope that you're doing well today and that you're having a delightful week. This is midweek with Pastor Shell. I, I am believing God for special healings for some of our folks we prayed for last evening. And, and uh, there's a lot of stuff going on and going around, but you know what? God is on the throne. He is listening to your prayer. He is hearing the cry from your heart. So be encouraged and know that he is with us each and every one through every decision we make, through every conflict that we come up against. He is with us, not against us, but he is with us. I'm going to, I'm going to share with you uh, a word that came to me uh, in the last couple of days in a heavy, heavy kind of way. It's a word called obligation. Now, what, what does that mean uh, to us? Uh, well, let's go to Scripture. Uh, isn't, isn't that our basis for everything? We go to Scripture in Romans, the first chapter. And uh, I've been uh, preaching in Romans, the first chapter, the last couple of weeks. But let's go to the word, to the verse 14, Romans 1 and 14. Paul makes this claim, and he makes it uh, more emphatically than anyone. The only person that felt an obligation greater than greater than Paul, I, I would assume, would be the Lord Jesus Christ. He felt the obligation to leave heaven, though he was God himself, and take on the form of man, that he may be able to become the sacrifice for all of humanity's sins. So now we can, we can walk freely to the cross by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and we're considered righteous by our Father. Oh my but it because Jesus felt obligated. God himself said, I'm obligated to gather my people back and give them a right standing with me. In order to do that, I've got to take care of their sin. Thus, the perfect lamb of God must die, and that is me. That is me, myself, he's saying in Jesus Christ. So he gave us his son, and he took care of that. That's a tremendous obligation that the Father God took upon himself to give us his son and a tremendous obligation that we'll never comprehend that Jesus willingly took on the form of man, became Jesus before, and then went to the cross and became the Christ of our salvation. Now, taking that word obligation even further uh, or back to where we can understand it more easily, let's look at the Apostle Paul. He says in, in verse 14, I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks both as both to the wise and the and the foolish that is why i am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in rome for i am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of god that brings salvation to everyone who believes my goodness this obligation then is not just tied to god the father it's not just tied uh, to, uh, uh, to Jesus, but Paul assumes this obligation. Now, where did, where did Paul, what, what caused Paul to, to feel this type of obligation? I, I, I've often wondered about that, and then I think about the crazy things that he did. Uh, he felt obligated to fulfill the law as he understood it and arrest Christians and even have them slaughtered. He he'd had that obligation. So when Jesus came to him on the road to Damascus and and revealed himself to Jesus revealed himself to Paul and greater yet revealed Paul and Paul's condition to Christ. Uh, in that process, and he came to know Christ, he felt obligated now, even a greater obligation to do the to, to follow the plan of God for his life. Now see what Paul had that many Christians uh, fail to see is that the Holy Spirit laid out a perfect plan for Paul and Paul felt obligation to live it. Now, what was that perfect plan? Well, he just tells us, I am obligated both to the Greek and to the non-Greeks, to the wise or to the, and to the foolish. In other words, I'm obligated to humanity to share, to bring the full gospel of righteousness to humanity. What an obligation. Now, you understand that in Paul's life, he was in prison, he was beaten, he was despised, he was chased, he, he had to run for his life, he had to escape, but he came forth with boldness 
And even in prison, he wrote, he wrote mo most of the Bible. It is amazing the obligation that this disciple felt to pursue the plan of God for his life. And I would ask us, my friend, where is your obligation? Where's my obligation? There is a, I, 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 you know, you've heard me by now. I just love knowing that I am the plan of God. I am living the plan of God for my life. There is the will of God is that I please him, that I, that I come to know him as Lord and Savior. And once I come to know Christ, he gives me my plan for my life, this side of the cross. And that's where, that's where we need to concentrate. But that's where we need to look at our obligation and say, am I living my, am I fulfilling, am I uh, feeling obligated to find out what God wants for me? to find out that place that I can best be used and serve serve him and honor him. I'm saying all this to, to bring to light a recent uh, uh, decision that, uh, that was placed upon me out of, out of the clear blue and, and a decision that just challenged me uh, in, in the word of, of what is my obligation, what is my number one obligation. And I remember... I remember at 16 years old when, when my parents were upstairs and, the, and, the, and my, my siblings upstairs in the top two floors of our crazy little house and they're just a small basement with a, with a flatbed freezer and I would come down and I would share. I would share the gospel. I would preach it to, uh, at 16 and the, and, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit would reveal uh, a truth to me that I just, I didn't even comprehend. It was just amazing what he did. But I knew at that point what I was supposed to be in for the rest of my life. And, I, and so I became a pastor and I, I have loved it with a passion. And then one day, for some strange reason, I decided that I needed to make a path for myself. Even though the plan of God and the path of God was clear for me, I was not just, I was a successful pastor in that. You know what a successful pastor is? One who loves people, one who, a shepherd who loves sheep. That is, that, that's what success is. It's, it's not about numbers and a whole bunch of stuff, but it's about someone who loves God's people like God loves people. Amen. Well, I, so I decided, well, I, I, think, uh, I think maybe I'm a little smarter than God and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deviate over here because I know, I know he loves me and I know I'm born of God and I know I'm, I, I've got my place in heaven, but I'm just going to make a little plan for myself. And those 12 years that I did that was the most miserable years of my life. Uh, though I had some good moments and some happy moments, okay, some feelings that, were, that was okay, uh, but I knew there was not that joy of, of waking every morning knowing that me and the Lord's on the same page and that we're starting out that day to, to bless him and to be a blessing on the earth and to those that we see. I, I, had, I was missing that. And, and down inside, I knew that I had deviated from God's plan for my life. Well, Thanks be to God by the mercy of the Holy Spirit, the mercifulness of our God. And I want you to know, friends, that the mercy of God will, will never cease to exist in your life. He comes, he will bring you back. And so he gave me an opportunity to once again, uh, obligated to share the gospel, the good news. And so I am now enjoying uh, the, the most beautiful life that you can imagine because of that obligation. And, and sometimes we feel like, uh, uh, again, deviating from that plan and going another direction doesn't mean God hates us. It just means that we're not being the best we can be or doing uh, the most we can do or being in the right place, the most, the most fruitful place that God wants us to be. Though that temptation will always come upon us. We're, we're tempted to follow our feelings. We're tempted to go along with uh, what feels good or, or, or what we think that our, uh, our desire would be. And my friend, I want to tell you what joy is. Joy is knowing that you are following God's plan for your life. That's where real joy is. That's where peace and contentment comes in. It, it, it's, it's, it's beyond feelings. It's the word obligation. I want to tell you that I feel an obligation this day 
to share the gospel like I have never shared it. <clears throat> I feel an obligation to share the righteousness of the Lord. And sometimes we are tempted to just want to do something else. Uh, I suppose as a pastor, the thing that would discourage pastors more than anything that is when uh, leadership, development, equipping, and, and it just seems leaders just don't, uh, uh, it just seems like we're, we're, we're not getting anywhere with, with, with that area of our ministry. That would discourage me, does discourage. It's the only thing that kind of distracts me at times. But overall, when I, uh, I think about the joy of the Lord and how God has so prospered and blessed my spirit, I feel like a rich man today. I feel like I am wealthy to no end because of the joy of the Lord that I have in my life. And I know that that should drive our obligation, the joy of the Lord. I am obligated to share the gospel. I am obligated to, to help the person that's in bondage become free. I am obligated by the, by the call that God has placed on my life Oh my gracious, how beautiful, beautiful that is in our lives. And I want to tell you, every single one of you that has come to know Christ, there is a plan of God for your life and a plan that will bring to you joy and peace and understanding. Oh my Lord, just let God reveal that to you because that revelation is what Paul had and nothing would stop him. They said, Paul, we're going to beat you time and time again. And as soon as he was released, he went out and he shared the good news, the gospel. Oh my gracious, the power of the gospel will dispel darkness. It'll change lives. It'll change hearts. It'll change minds. It'll override our feelings. That obligation to be God's person must be paramount in our hearts and our lives. That's what wakes us up in the morning and sends us forth with vitality and vigor. It is the fact that I am God's person today on this earth. Father God, I pray that you bless every heart, every soul, every person right now that's in bondage, that's hurting. I know folks that are hurting so deeply this moment, but so do you. You know those people and you're able to touch them, oh God. You're able to give them a strength your strength. You tell us in your word that, that you have come to comfort us. You are the comforter in the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would comfort each and every one, bring peace to our heart. And please, Father, help us in the Holy Spirit. Help us understand that we must feel obligated to be the light of God to a dark world. Oh, my gracious, we thank you, Lord, for your preciousness, your kindness, your loving, uh, loving mercifulness, God. You're merciful to us. And I thank you. I thank you that you're our total and complete healer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, I speak blessings to you, every one of you today, in the name of Jesus.